Good morning and a very warm welcome to you all to our morning worship with St Matthew's Bristol this morning. My name is Ian Tompkins and I'm the vicar of St Matthew's. Today is a day of great encouragement and hope for us as the St Matthew's Church building is being reopened for Sunday services. Praise God for that. And whether you are joining services online this morning or back in our church buildings today, you are very welcome. Thank you for joining us. Later in our service, John Ball is going to be speaking about being a mouthpiece for truth and justice in our world today, on the front line of our lives. But first, we have our opening song, and it is a song all about trusting God and living as people of faith in a loving and faithful God. What a beautiful and encouraging song that is. And I'm going to continue now with some opening words of praise. Be with us, Spirit of God. Nothing can separate us from your love. Breathe on us, breath of God. Fill us with your saving power. 
Speak in us wisdom of God. Bring strength, healing and peace. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. We're now going to have a short all-age time in our service. Currently in these all-age times we are looking at favourite Bible passages chosen by members of the St Matthew's Sunday Club. This week we have an exciting story from the Old Testament and I'll leave it up to John and Imogen to explain. Families and children then have a choice to follow the all-age materials that are on our website or to remain with the rest of the service uh, if they'd like to. So on to our all-age time with John and Imogen Bohr. God has promised us. Yeah, but but look at those armies. Oh. <laughs> Let, let's not worry about that right now. Let's find the fruit. <gasps> yeah, 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 yeah. Fruit. Take them on. Oh, oh no, 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 Come on, guys, God's with us. No, no, no way. way. No Did way. you see how big they were? We were like grasshoppers. <sighs> story of Caleb and the spies. Caleb and the spies were sent by Moses to scout out the promised land, to work out what it was like and to report back to the people of Israel about what they saw. Caleb was the only one who was brave enough to say we should go and take the land. All the other spies were too scared. They didn't trust that God knew what he was doing, that God would protect them and God would help them to be successful in the endeavours that he had given them. This story is in Numbers chapter 13. And if you've got time today, I'd encourage you to read it. Um, maybe by yourself, maybe with um, those that you live with, those around you. Have a read of this story. And remember the story of Caleb and the spies. Have a think about your life about what God might be doing with you, what God might be asking you to do. I wonder how many times we are afraid of what God is asking us to do. I wonder how many times we forget that God is with us when we step in to new places, into new ventures, into new lands. This week, Let's try and remember that God is with us when he asks us to do things for him. That God is with us as we step into new places and new things. That we can trust God. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for the story of Caleb and the spies. Thank you for Caleb's faithfulness. Thank you that Caleb trusted you. We pray that this week we might trust you, that we might know that you go with us, 
wherever you have called us to be. Amen. Well, our great thanks to John and Imogen and to the whole cast uh, for that lovely all age time. We now come to a time in our service uh, which we call the Confession. And this is a really good time to, to reset our lives, so to speak, to look back over this past week and think about where we might have fallen short in our words, our thoughts, our deeds of a beautiful and holy God in the way that we have behaved. But we can know God's grace and forgiveness. The Spirit of the Lord fills the world and knows our every word and deed. Let us then open ourselves to the Lord and confess our sins, our wrongdoings in penitence and faith. We say together, Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with our God. Amen. And so may God, who loved the world so much that he sent his Son to be our Saviour, forgive us our sins and make us holy to serve him in the world, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now a special colic prayer for this week, a prayer that we share with churches throughout the world. Gracious Father, revive your church in our day and make her holy, strong and faithful for your glorious sake. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We're now going to have our reading from the Bible by Ruth and that will be followed by our Bible reflection from John Ball. The reading today is from 2 Samuel chapter 12 verses 1 to 13. The Lord sent Nathan to David. When he came to him, he said, there were two men in a certain town, one rich and the other poor. The rich man had a very large number of sheep and cattle, but the poor man had nothing except one little ewe lamb he had bought. He raised it and it grew up with him and his children. It shared his food, drank from his cup and even slept in his arms. It was like a daughter to him. Now a traveller came to the rich man but the rich man refrained from taking one of his own sheep or cattle to prepare a meal for the traveller who had come to him. Instead, he took the ewe lamb that belonged to the poor man and prepared it for the one who had come to him. David burned with anger against the man and said to Nathan, As surely as the Lord lives, this man who did this must die. He must pay for that lamb four times over, because he did such a thing and had no pity. Then Nathan said to David, You are the man. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. I anointed you king over Israel, and I delivered you from the hand of Saul. I gave you your master's house to you, and your master's wives into your arms. I gave you all of Israel and Judah. And if all this had been too little, I would have given you more. Why did you despise the word of the Lord by doing what is evil in his eyes? You struck down Uriah the Hittite with a sword and took his wife to be your own. You killed him with the sword of the Ammonites. Now, therefore, the sword will never depart from your house, because you despised me and took the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be your own. This is what the Lord says. Out of your own household, I'm going to bring calamity on you. Before your very eyes, I will take your wives and give them to one who is close to you, and he will sleep with your wives in broad daylight. You did it in secret, but I will do this thing in broad daylight before all Israel. Then David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. Nathan replied, The Lord has taken away your sin. You are not going to die. This is the name of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning, everyone. If we haven't met, uh, my name's John, and uh, I'm training to be a vicar here in Bristol. 
and uh, I worship and serve at St Matthew's. Today we're carrying on with our series through Mark Green's book, Fruitfulness on the Frontline. And today we'll be considering the call and the challenge to be a mouthpiece for truth and justice on our front lines in our daily lives. And as we begin, let me pray for us. So Lord, I pray, come Holy Spirit, may you transform us and speak to us this morning. We ask that you would speak to us through this passage and uh, teach us how to live lives uh, following your way of life. In Jesus' name, Amen. So once, when I was growing up um, and in school, um, my English teacher set the class some homework. And the following day, um, not many of the class had done it, and I hadn't done it either. Now, most of the people who hadn't done it were very uh, open about the fact that they hadn't done it. But I tried to deceive the teacher and to try and say that I had done it when I hadn't. Um, and I was found out. And I got the most severe punishment out of anyone. And that day I learnt the importance of truth. Truth is the right way, even when it's hard. We live in a world of lies and misinformation. Truth is not a hallmark of our culture, but it is a hallmark of our God. Now to give a, background, a bit of background to our passage, what's just happened is that uh, the King of Israel, King David, um, has had an affair with a woman called Bathsheba um, while her husband was out fighting for King David as one of his military commanders. And then, to try and cover up the affair, he sends this commander um, out to battle, uh, to an impossible battle, knowing that he would get killed. So King David has committed adultery and then murder to try and cover up the truth. And then it appears on the scene Nathan the prophet, whose job it is to speak the word of God to the king. And he reveals the truth to David, showing that God knows the truth. Nathan says to King David, in verse 9 of our passage. Why did you despise the word of the Lord by doing what is evil in his eyes? You struck down Uriah the Hittite with the sword and took his wife to be your own. You killed him with the sword of the Ammonites. Nathan told the truth to King David, despite the risk that came with it. David had already murdered someone and, as we notice, it was God who revealed the truth to Nathan. I wonder, where is there untruth or lies on your front line? And is there something for you to say with grace and courage? To think of a few examples, um, I think in church sometimes uh, one of the ways we can risk being uh, untruthful is how we report uh, attendance numbers and I'm talking about the church in general so uh, and how we present ourselves and more generally maybe we can all think about how we present ourselves on social media and in our marketing perhaps if your job requires it um, you can be truthful on your timesheets and tell the tell people the truth in conversation, even when it's hard. Maybe we can also be truthful about what we're going to be doing on Sundays, or uh, when we have another Christian meeting to be open with our friends. 
Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth and the life. And it is to him we must come to help for revealing the truth in our lives and on our front lines. He already knows the truth and it is him we can trust to help us when pursuing truthfulness in our lives. He is the truth and the truth sets us free. Now, in speaking the truth, Nathan the prophet also spoke up for justice. We live in a world of injustice and exploitation. Justice is not a hallmark of our world, but it is a hallmark of our God. And in our passage, we see that Nathan used a metaphorical story to show David what he did was unjust. He told the story of someone who exploited his power and status to steal from those who had so little. And if we read the verse at the end of the previous chapter, uh, it says, The thing David had done displeased the Lord. One of the Anglican marks of mission is to transform the unjust structures of society to challenge violence of every kind and pursue peace and reconciliation. I wonder, where is there injustice on your front line? And is there something for you to say with grace and courage? It could be something as simple as not getting involved in gossip about those who are marginalised or on the edge. Perhaps it's taking the time um, to sit with the person who's always by themselves at school or at work or on your street. Perhaps it's about reporting any bullying you know of. And that can be either in person or online. If there's an issue that's close to your heart, perhaps this week is a good week to write to your MP about it. Uh, And particularly at this time, we think uh, we must think and pray about how we can stand up for racial equality by our actions and words. And seeking injustice maybe uh, in our church and in our parish um, perhaps could be some, something as simple as having open eyes to the whole parish and praying for opportunities to stand up for and serve those who are marginalised in the community. I think the first step of pursuing truth and justice is for us to see others with God's eyes, to see everyone around us as they have been created to be in the image of God. Those the world regards as disposable to see as precious those that the world regards as a burden to see as a gift, those that the world regards as superfluous to see as invaluable. And for this, we need need God's help by the Holy Spirit to open our eyes. And we see that in our passage as well, that um, God supernaturally reveals the truth to Nathan for him to speak up to the king. To stand up for truth and justice, we need God's courage and wisdom on our front lines. As Mark Green says in his book, evil is not easily dethroned. Guts, the Holy Spirit, prayer and the support of God's people are all needed in the pursuit of truth and justice. Nathan had the guts to speak the uncomfortable truth that God had revealed to him to someone who had far more earthly power than him. We believe in a God of truth and a God of justice who has revealed himself in Jesus Christ. Let's now ask for his help in living daily lives of truth and justice. Let's pray together. Lord, firstly, we want to thank you and praise you for your just nature, for your true nature. 
and we want to commit ourselves again to you today. Firstly, Lord, we, pre we uh, say that we're sorry for those times where we have bent the truth for our own ends, uh, even in what may seem like little ways, and where we have not stood up for justice in our daily lives. Lord, have mercy on us and transform us into your ways. And Lord, we ask for your wisdom, for your grace, for your courage on our front lines. Reveal to us where there is untruth and injustice. And give us the words and the actions to uh, represent you and to be messengers of truth and justice in our world. And we ask that your kingdom would come on our on each of our front lines. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. After hearing the Bible reading and John's reflection, we now have an opportunity to respond to what we've heard and to commit our lives to Jesus or recommit as we listen to this sung version of the Christian creed by Aidan. Creed comes from the word credo in Latin, which means I believe, and a creed is a statement of what we believe. And this will be followed by a time of prayer by Nick. Yeah. 
eternal. I believe in the virgin birth. I believe in the saints' communion and in your holy church. I believe in the resurrection when Jesus comes again. For I believe in the name of Jesus. I believe in God our Father. I believe in Christ the Son. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Our God is three in one. I believe in the resurrection that we will rise again. For I believe in the name of Jesus. Yes, I believe in the name of Jesus. Yes, I believe in the name of Jesus. As part of our consideration of being a mouthpiece for truth and justice, we start our intercessions today with a prayer that Mark Green has written for this theme. Father, help me to love mercy, seek justice and walk humbly before you on my front line. Give me ears to discern where falsehoods reign, eyes to see where injustice has its roots, wisdom and courage to cultivate truth and justice. For your glory may it be. Amen. As we turn to pray for God's world, you might like to make your own glow with your hands. Put your hands together to form a sphere to represent the earth. Keep them together as I pray for the world. Father God, as we face the coronavirus together, we pray for the sick, their families, key workers and each other, each of us with an interest in a just outcome. Amen. As we turn to pray for our links today, which are Changing Tunes and the St Matthews Musicians, you might like to mime playing an instrument. It could be the violin, or possibly a flute, the drums, or any other instrument your imagination could conjure up. I invite you to mime as I pray for Changing Tunes and our musicians. Father God, we pray for changing tunes where the musicians have kept in touch with participants by letter, giving them creative tasks to work on during this challenging time. We also thank you for the musicians here at St Matthews who have helped maintain our sense of community through our virtual services. Amen. As we turn to pray for the community of St Matthews, you might if you're at home, want to look in the direction of a friend or a neighbour. If you've been able to join the service in the church building, you may wish to look around at others in the congregation. Father God, we pray for the community of St Matthews. Today we give thanks for the recovery progress made by Margaret Williams. In all needs and situations, we ask that today you bring the comfort of the Spirit to each and every person on our hearts. Amen. We end our time of prayer with the Lord's Prayer. Do say this together with me. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. There's been a lot to think about in our short service this morning, in a world that needs people of truth and also people who care passionately for justice, not just about the big issues, but for those on the front line of our lives, wherever we might live. What does Christian faith mean for you? Perhaps you are someone who's known of faith for many years. Perhaps you are someone who is exploring it still, searching for meaning and purpose in your lives. Well, as a Christian, I know that meaning and purpose for me is shown through Jesus Christ, God who came to earth, the most beautiful human being ever, who shows me how to live life. And when I know Jesus, I know God. I am filled by his Holy Spirit. I needn't tackle life on my own. May I encourage you, wherever you are in your journey of faith, to think more about the beautiful love that we find in Jesus Christ. And I'm going to send us on our way at the end of the service with just a few words uh, of prayer. And then we'll have a beautiful song to listen to, a song of praise for God, who we know in Jesus Christ. So Heavenly Father, be present to us in each new day. And every moment and every situation, may we know your love and your grace reflecting your image to all those we meet. And so today and into this coming week, let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord in the front lines of our lives. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. <laughs>